Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thou of Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, is now, and forever shall be, a world without end. Amen. O my Jesus, forgive us our sins, save us from the fires of hell. Lead all souls to heaven, especially those in most need of thy mercy. Hail, Holy Queen, Mother of mercy, our life, our sweetness, and our hope. To thee do we cry, poor band of children of Eve. To thee do we send up our sighs, mourning and weeping in these valleys of tears. Turn them, most gracious advocate, that eyes of mercy towards us. And after the sorrow of thou, Show unto us the blessed fruit of thy womb, Jesus. O clement, O loving, O sweet Virgin Mary, pray for us, O Holy Mother of God, that we made worthy of the promises of Christ. O God, whose only begotten Son, by his life, death, and resurrection, has purchased for us the rewards of eternal life. Grant we beseech you that we may meditate upon these mysteries of the most holy rosary of the blessed Virgin Mary, may imitate what they contain, and obtain what they promise. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Have a blessed day.
Good morning. Welcome to the Cathedral of St. Mary. Today we celebrate the 25th Sunday in Ordinary Time. Today's Mass will be offered for Arshil Lawrence. The celebrant for today's Mass is the Most Reverend Archbishop Thomas Wensky, Archbishop of the Archdiocese of Miami. He is assisted by Deacon Sergio Rodicio. We extend a special welcome to the Equestrian Order of the Holy Sepulchre of Jerusalem, who join us today to honor their patroness, Our Lady of Palestine. The music of the Mass may be found in the Mass leaflet, available from the ushers and at the entrance to the church. We are about to enter into the sacred mysteries of our faith. Let us take this time to quiet ourselves and open ourselves to divine grace as we begin our celebration.
In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Peace be with you. We welcome to the Mother Church of the Archdiocese of Miami the Knights and Dames of the Holy Sepulchre who join us for Mass this morning. As we begin, let us place ourselves in the presence of our God, and as we enter into his holy presence, let us acknowledge our sins so that our worship may be truly pleasing to him. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have in my thoughts and in my words, and what I have done and what I have failed to do through my fault, through my fault, to my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask, Blessed Mary of a Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, pray for us. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life.
Let us pray. O God, who founded all the commands of your sacred law upon love of you and of our neighbor, grant that by keeping your precepts we may merit to attain eternal life through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. A reading from the Book of Wisdom. The wicked say, Let us beset the just one, because he is obnoxious to us. He sets himself against our doings, reproaches us for transgressions of the law, and charges us with violations of our training. Let us see whether his, his words be true. Let us find out what will happen to him. For if the just one be the Son of God, God will defend him and deliver him from the hand of his foes. With revilement and torture, let us put the just one to the test, that we may have proof of his gentleness and try his patience. Let us condemn him to a shameful death, for according to his own words, God will take care of him. The word of the Lord. A reading from the letter of St. James. 
Beloved, where jealousy and selfish ambition exist, there is disorder and every foul practice. But the wisdom from above is first of all pure, then peaceable, gentle, compliant, full of mercy and good fruits, without inconstancy or insincerity. And the fruit of righteousness is sown in peace for those who cultivate peace. Where do the wars and where do the conflicts among you come from? Is it not from your passions that make war within your members? You covet, but do not possess. You kill and envy, but you cannot obtain. You fight and wage war. You do not possess because you do not ask. You ask, but do not receive because you ask wrongly to spend it on your passions. Bless you that you may well proclaim the Holy Gospel in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. From the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Jesus and his disciples left from there and began a journey through Galilee, but he did not wish anyone to know about it. He was teaching his disciples and telling them, the Son of Man is to be handed over to men, and they will kill him. And three days after his death, the Son of Man will rise. But they did not understand the saying, and they were afraid to question him. They came to Capernaum, and once inside the house, he began to ask them, What were you arguing about on the way? But they remained silent. They had been discussing among themselves on the way who was the greatest, then he sat down, called the twelve, and said to them, If anyone wishes to be first, he shall be the last of all and the servant of all. Taking a child, he placed it in their midst, and putting his arm around it, he said to them, 
Whoever receives one child such as this in my name receives me, and whoever receives me receives not me, but the one who sent me. The Gospel of the Lord. Today, as you see, there are gathered knights and dames of the Most Holy Sepulchre, and these men and women help support the mission of the Church in the Holy Land, in particular the Latin Patriarchy of Jerusalem, which includes Cyprus, Jordan, Israel, and Palestine what is in the West Bank and Gaza. Sometimes I think the Archdiocese of Miami is very diverse, and it is, but the Patriarchy of Jerusalem, I think, is even more diverse. The Knights and Dames of the Most Holy Sepulchre, with their charity, help keep open Catholic schools in a country and a region in which Catholics endure great pressure, both from Jewish authorities and from their Muslim neighbors, who, like most of the Catholics in the Holy Land, are Arabs. The most recent war in the Holy Land that began almost a year ago when Hamas launched a terrorist attack, killing thousands of innocent Israeli civilians. This war has escalated, as we've seen in recent days, and there is no viable, no just, no enduring peace in sight. Last month, on the Feast of the Assumption, Cardinal Pier Battista Pisabella the Latin Patriarch of Jerusalem said, all that remains is for us to pray. All that remains is for us to pray. And so let us pray that in this long night that we are living through the intercession of the Most Holy Mary will open a glimpse of light for all of us and for the whole world. The Cardinal's prayer is our prayer today. And so besides their charitable work, the Knights and Ladies of the Holy Sepulchre, and all of us as well, are called to pray for peace. Peace in the Holy Land, for a peace and just social order throughout the Middle East. And in a special way at this Mass, we invoke Mary, Our Lady of Palestine, to intercede for us and to win for all the peoples of the Middle East and for the Arabs and the Israelis and the Holy Land the gift of a just and lasting peace. Since 1994, Our Lady of Palestine has been the patroness of the Order of the Holy Sepulchre. And the actual date of her feast day is October 25th, and it was added to the Patriarchy's calendar, liturgical calendar, about a hundred years ago. And today, halfway between Jerusalem and Tel Aviv, there is a sanctuary dedicated to Our Lady of Palestine. 
Now, of course, a hundred years ago when this devotion began, the word Palestine did not describe a political reality or an ideology or a dream, but simply referred to the geographical region that was the earthly homeland of Jesus and his mother Mary. And so in invoking, in invoking the intercession of Our Lady of Palestine, we pray for all the peoples who today live in the Holy Land, Israelis and Palestinians, Christians, Jews, and Muslims. We pray for those who were born there, those who have immigrated there, and those who, like many of us, have traveled there as pilgrims. And our prayer is always a prayer for peace, peace in the Holy Land. As St. James tells us in today's second reading, the fruit of righteousness is sown in peace. But James asks, where do wars and where do the conflicts among you come from? And he gives us an answer in this short reading. Where jealousy and selfish ambition exist, there is disorder and every foul practice. Jealousy is a feeling of anger or unhappiness that can be caused by wanting something that someone else has or by the belief that someone you love is liked by someone else. It is envy, an envy that consumes the person who is envious. Selfish ambition is a focus on what one can get from a situation or a person or a place rather than what can give, than what one can give. St. James says, where jealousy and selfish ambition exist, there is disorder in every foul practice. And this is true, whether we're talking about international politics, it is true whether we're talking about office politics, it is true in international relations, it is true in our family relations, in our relations with our neighbors, and our co-workers. Sin has a corrosive effect on all human relations. In the Gospel reading today, Jesus is explaining to his disciples that he would be handed over and killed in the manner described in today's first reading. Apparently the lesson went over the heads of his apostles because as they were returning to Capernaum, they were arguing about who was the greatest, the most important among them. Jealousy and selfish ambition were alive and well in their midst. And because of jealousy and selfish ambition, we too claim for ourselves a false sense of autonomy, which was the original sin of Adam and Eve. They thought they could become like gods, but without God. And that false autonomy today would even justify the killing of a baby in her mother's womb. But Jesus takes a little child, a vulnerable child, the weakest form of human existence, and a child by its very nature calls out for care and acceptance. And Jesus makes that child a symbol of God who is accepted when one picks up a child, who is accepted when one accepts Jesus, who is to be handed over to be killed. And embracing that child, Jesus puts forth another model of life, a life lived outside of selfish ambition or jealous claims to human autonomy, 
a life that lies within the providence of God. Whoever receives one child such as this receives me, Jesus assures us. And he tells us, if you want to be first, be the last of all. Be the servant of all. Jesus is proposing to us the way of humility. Now, humility doesn't mean that we should think less of ourselves, but rather humility means that we should think of ourselves less. And in this way, we can learn to imitate Christ in his selfless gift of himself for our salvation. Jesus leads his disciples towards Jerusalem. No earthly power will save Jesus from death, but his father will save him from being left for dead, for on the third day he will rise. While much in our world today seems to speak of death and endless hatred, We who follow Christ must never grow weary in praying for peace. We pray for peace in our hearts, peace in our homes, peace with our neighbors and among the nations of the world. And let us not worry, let us not weary in praying for peace in the land that our Lord, the Prince of Peace, called home. As Cardinal Pizabala said, when we look at the bleak realities before us, all that remains is for us to pray. Our Lady of Palestine, pray for us. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken to the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. To God the Father Almighty, dear brothers and sisters, may every prayer of our heart be directed. For his will is that all humanity should be saved and come to the knowledge of the truth. For Pope Francis, Archbishop Wensky, and all bishops, priests, and deacons, may they lead us as humble servants and true shepherds. Let us pray to the Lord. For leaders of governments and nations, May they cultivate peace and work for the true good of the people. Let us pray to the Lord. Amen. For all Catholics, 
May we follow after Christ and seek to be the last of all and the servant of all. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the equestrian order of the Holy Sepulchre of Jerusalem, through the intercession of Our Lady of Palestine, may they continue their work in Palestine and the Holy Land. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all our family members and friends who are ill, and for all our beloved dead, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. O God, our refuge and our strength, hear the prayers of your church. For you yourself are the source of all devotion, and grant, we pray, that what we ask in faith we may truly obtain through Christ our Lord. As we come to the moment of the offertory collection, please consider the gift you're about to make. Allow this moment to be an opportunity of stewardship and gratitude to God. You may also give online or by scanning the QR code, which can be found in the mass leaflet, and also next to the missalettes in the pews. Please be generous. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. May God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit.
Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Receive with favor, O Lord, we pray, the offerings of your people, that what they profess with devotion and faith may be theirs through these heavenly mysteries, through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord, for out of compassion for the waywardness that is ours, he humbled himself and was born of the Virgin. By the passion of the cross, he freed us from unending death, and by rising from the dead, he gave us life eternal. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory as without end we acclaim. To you, therefore, most merciful Father, we make humble prayer and petition through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, that you accept and bless these gifts, these offerings, these holy and unblemished sacrifices, which we offer you firstly for your holy Catholic Church. Be pleased to grant her peace, to guard, unite, and govern her throughout the whole world, together with your servant Francis, our Pope, and me, your unworthy servant, and all those who holding to the truth and on the Catholic and apostolic faith. Remember, Lord, your servants and all gathered here whose faith and devotion are known to you. For them we offer you this sacrifice of praise, for they offer it for themselves and all who are dear to them, for the redemption of their souls in hope of health and well-being, and paying their homage to you, the eternal God, living and true. In communion with those whose memory we venerate, especially the glorious ever-Virgin Mary, Mother of our God and Lord Jesus Christ, and blessed Joseph, her spouse, your blessed apostles and martyrs, Peter and Paul, Andrew, and all your saints, we ask that through their merits and prayers, in all things, we may be defended by your protecting help. Therefore, Lord, we pray, graciously accept this oblation of our service, that of your whole family. Order our days in your peace and command that we be delivered from eternal damnation and counted among the flock of those you have chosen. Be pleased, O God, we pray, to bless, acknowledge, and approve this offering in every respect, make it 
spiritual and acceptable, so that it may become for us the body and blood of your most beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer, he took bread in his holy and venerable hands and with eyes raised to heaven, to you, O God, his almighty Father. Giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took this precious chalice in his holy and venerable hands, and once more giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The Mystery of Faith. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the blessed Passion, the resurrection from the dead, and the glorious ascension into heaven of Christ, your Son, our Lord, we, your servants and your holy people, offer to your glorious majesty from the gifts that you have given us, this pure victim, this holy victim, this spotless victim, the holy bread of eternal life and the chalice of everlasting salvation. Be pleased to look upon these offerings with a serene and kindly countenance and to accept them as once you were pleased to accept the gifts of your servant, able to just, the sacrifice of Abraham, our father in faith, and the offering of your high priest, Melchizedek, a holy sacrifice, a spotless victim. In humble prayer, we ask you, almighty God, command that these gifts be borne by the hands of your holy angel to your altar on high in the sight of your divine majesty, so that all of us who through this participation at the altar receive the most holy body and blood of your Son may be filled with every grace and heavenly blessing. Remember also, Lord, your servants who have gone before us with the sign of faith and rest in the sleep of peace. Grant them, O Lord, we pray, and all who sleep in Christ, a place of refreshment, light, and peace. To us also, your servants, who those sinners hope in your abundant mercies, graciously grant some share and fellowship with your holy apostles and martyrs, with John the Baptist, Stephen, Matthias, Barnabas, and all your saints. Admit us, we beseech you, into their company, not weighing our merits, but granting us your pardon through Christ our Lord, through whom you continue to make all these good things, O Lord. You sanctify them, fill them with life, bless them, and bestow them upon us. Through him and with him and in him, O God, almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever.
at the Savior's command, and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Hallowed be thy name, be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Peace. Peace of Christ be with you. Peace be with you. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter my room. I will only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. May the body of Christ keep me safe for eternal life.
Let us pray. Graciously raise up, O Lord, those you renew with this sacrament, that we may come to possess your redemption, both in mystery and in the manner of our life, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Any announcements? Any announcements? No announcements. Please be seated for the second collection. <laughs> Good morning. We welcome all the families that are here preparing to have their children baptized at the cathedral. We'll be meeting immediately after mass in the cathedral office center and we look forward to seeing you there. Thank you. Good morning, everyone. Uh, we're packing the foods for the people today. It's going to be downstairs. You go down the front door and go underneath on the vestibule. It's going to be in the back. We're going to be packing food for about five, ten minutes. So if you can help us out, we're going to do this for the people we give food to. Thank you very much. And a word of thanks once again to uh, the knights and the dames of the Equestrian Order of the Holy Sepulchre. Thank you for your presence here this morning. Thank you for all you do. Uh, and as the Archbishop mentioned, in support of our brothers and sisters in, in Palestine, asking for the intercession of Our Lady of Palestine for you, for your work, uh, and for peace. You know? uh, so thank you. And thanks to all who have joined us this morning for our celebration. Uh, we uh, welcome you, as the Archbishop said, to the cathedral. Thank you for your presence, and thank you for your support. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace.